Welcome to the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley and I will be your host of the show. This is the first episode. And on this first episode, we have on my friend and special guest, Brandon Kirk. Brandon Kirk, he owns a carpet cleaning company here in Colorado Springs called HydroClean. And HydroClean has has other companies underneath it too. We get more into that in the episode. So stay tuned. On this episode, we specifically talk about ranking on Google and taking care of your customer and, you know, just the expansion of Colorado Springs and the growth of it overall. Of course, we talk about some other things, but you're going to have to listen to the episode to hear that. So let's dive right in to the interview. This is a weekly show where I interview business owners and entrepreneurs from Colorado Springs in Colorado Springs doing things in the community of Colorado Springs. I'm here with my friend Brandon Kirk. He runs a business here, obviously, or he wouldn't be on the show. <laughs> tell tell uh, the people of Colorado Springs a little bit about you and your business. Okay. Well, um, I own a business which has basically three brands. Uh, we own HydroClean Carpet Cleaning, uh, Angie's Carpet Care, which was another company we purchased, and then uh, Planet Duct Air Duct Cleaning. They all fall under the corporation of HydroClean Incorporated. Oh, nice. So, but yeah, it's all about home services and, you know, bringing as much value as we can to the customer. I uh, started uh, HydroClean. Well, I actually took it over. I purchased it uh, from a friend who mm-hmm. owned the company. Uh, it had passed through his family. And it was one van, uh, one truck mounted carpet cleaning unit. And he gave me a month of training which was great. Yeah. And now we've grown, you know, since April 1st of 2011 till now, I mean, we had one truck. Now we've got six carpet cleaning trucks, two air duct trucks with another on the way and a big box truck that we use for uh, delivering uh, uh, area rugs and and stuff like that, picking them up and and then taking them back to the clients. Cool. So so how long was the, the growth at first? Like, was it a slow process? Yeah, it was a slow process. I mean, and we track it year after year. I mean, we've had back to back, uh, double digit growth, uh, year after year. Nice. And, uh, it's, it, I mean, obviously there was starting off the, our very first year was, was pretty hard. I mean, we started out, I think from April to December, we did like $89,000 of business and for us, you know, small business and this is operating costs, employees and operating costs, employees, which was pretty much just me and my son. That okay. Year. And buying equipment and doing repairs and purchasing a cleaning solution, all that stuff. I mean, we had a pretty decent year and we've just grown every year. It seems like just every year we've added on an, another van mm-hmm. because the demand in Colorado Springs and the surrounding area has been so, so big. For sure. And yeah, over the last 10 years, I'm, I haven't been here, but I'm sure you've been able to watch the growth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, just unfold in front of your eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, especially the growth out east, uh, Falcon, Peyton, uh, mm-hmm. the whole area that's east of Powers. I mean, the city is moving east. Yeah. I mean, we know that. Uh, I, I expect that within, you know, 15, 20 years, it, w- it will be continuous city from here all the way, all the way to Callahan. Where's, how far is Callahan? Callahan's uh, probably about a good, oh, 30 miles east of here. Okay. So basically... Uh, almost as far as it is from here to Castle Rock, mm-hmm. except, except going east. I was just staying in uh, Ellicott, which okay. is like 25 miles east. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, yeah, we, and we do some work out in Ellicott and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a nice area and we're with the economy, the way it's going, just depending on th- things, how they roll out in the country mm-hmm. and everything. If, if we stay on this projected growth path, I mean, uh, Colorado is becoming a, a great place to live and work. So yeah. I mean, out out east is just going to be booming. I feel I, mean, I, I could so I could see that. Potential. Yeah. I know uh, in Kansas City, that's where I'm from. Um, there's like there's Kansas City, and then there's suburbs that are intricately connected to it, mm-hmm. like Overland Park, and Overland Park's as big as or at least half the size of Colorado Springs, sure. I think. And <laughs> and it's just I can see the growth growing outwards like that, except only going east. Yeah. <laughs> with with Kansas City, it kind of just out goes. Yeah. At, all directions <laughs> yeah, out on the plains. I mean, you got, you have less physical barriers to, you know, impede your growth. I mm-hmm. mean, obviously going at, going into the mountains, uh, it's much harder to build there. So obviously, yeah. you know, growth is, is, is slower in the mountains and then it's going to be on the plains. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, we're very excited because more people moving here, more jobs, more business, more homes being built. 
uh, those are more opportunities for for us to go in and uh, take care of their cleaning and uh, yeah. whether it's for carpets, air ducts, or whatever. And I've I've noticed you obviously your brand speaks for itself kind of like your your attention to detail your your it doesn't speak for itself but the the ratings on google kind of reflect your your dedication to the job sure. like there's like 600 of them and it's like all five stars like not even like a 4.5 i think it's five right <laughs> i think we're, uh, we might maybe at a 4.9 okay it's just cause, i mean you're not going to make everyone happy yeah and some people have a bad day i mean it is what it is. And yeah. So, you know, just, That's why it's crazy to see like so, so many reviews mm -hmm. and keeping that, that integrity going. And uh, I think, that, yeah. I think that's awesome. <laughs> well, we, 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 when we get a review, good or bad, we take it personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it, I mean, if we get a bad review, it's like, we feel bad. It's like, wow, what could we have done better? Mm -hmm. Why did this happen? What is it? A, is it an employee training issue we need to work on? Did I do something wrong? Was the customer just having a bad day? Did my guys, miss a step i mean that happens i mean that, yeah the cool thing is we've got our written guarantee we give to every customer and if people are reasonable we're 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 always wanting to to make it right and give them mm -hmm. the most value so for sure I mean, but, but being able to pay attention to that um your your reviews whether it's google yelp angie's list thumbtack i mean all the different places that you can leave reviews it's very important to not only, you know, ask for reviews. I think that's important. For sure. You, yeah. You need the feedback. You mm -hmm. need to know if you're doing good or if you're slacking. Um, more than just stars on a, on a Google page. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, more, it's growing it, internally. It's data. Yeah. It's like, okay, ooh, we keep having the same, the same issue. This the same thing keeps being mentioned in a review. That tells me this is something I need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Is it a training issue? Do we need to change something about our training, our culture, whatever to, make it so that the customer has a more excellent experience for sure and so that the the data is very valuable it also yes it, it helps with google rankings and and our online profile so and i think the biggest thing is as the owner of the company because mm -hmm. i'm not out there pushing the wand anymore i'm not out there you know scrubbing on people's couches um i have i have people to do that mm -hmm. and that gives me the freedom as a business owner to work on my company instead yeah. of in my company exactly yeah because when you're in when, when you're in the weeds mm -hmm. you can't see the big picture that's exactly what, what my mentors have told me when trying to grow my video production company is mm -hmm. you need to start you know building your team of pe trained people who know what they're doing so that you can work on the company yeah. not in the company like you said yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah and th that's the the trap i see a lot of business owners fall into mm -hmm. they get so busy with the day-to-day -day. they get so into the weeds with um, little minor things popping up here and there, their, their attention gets taken from where yeah. it needs to be and gets put on things that somebody else really honestly could handle. And you only have so much attention a day. Like, I think I look at it like there's like a battery each day for mm -hmm. attention. And like, if you drain that, I mean, you drain it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and some people have a different, you know, loads that they can hold, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, my biggest thing is, I mean, there's only so many hours in the day. There's yeah. only so many years of life we, we're we going to have on this planet. So we've got to maximize it because, I mean, you know, somebody wastes my money. Okay, big deal. I can get more money. Yeah. Can't, can't get time. I can never get my time back. Yeah, and precisely. If you, if you ever see me and I'm flustered, I'm, I'm angry about something, it's because somebody has taken my time. Yeah. And that that's just the, the one area. It's like, please don't waste my time give me, you know, uh, if you're going to use my time, it, it, it better be profitable. It better have mm -hmm. some value to it. For sure. Know? So that's, that's my big thing. And value is more than just a uh, monetary money. Yeah. Value can come in many shapes and forms. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I found that that is the most valuable commodity. It's, it's worth, definitely it's worth more than money, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's, that's your time. So so tell me about the 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 guarantees. What made you want to start doing that? Is that an industry standard, or is that something specifically you? Well, no. I, I mean, I, I wish I could take credit for it, but I, I I've had a lot of business coaches over the years, and uh, they uh, I actually had a business coach say, "Hey, do you have a written guarantee that you can hand to your customers?" Yeah. I said, "No, we don't have that." Did that scare you to try well, to yeah, do a guarantee? Yeah, absolutely, it did. I was like, you know, now my. It, I, I, I hedged my bet a little. Yes, I have a written guarantee. Says, hey, if something's not yeah. right, we're going to come back and fix it. Yeah. 
I'm not. But you, did you think some people were going to try to take advantage of it? And well, yes, I, I was like, oh, I, oh my gosh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have so many problems, and people are going to take advantage. And yeah, I'm going to be honest, people have taken advantage of it. Yeah. But the people who who've done that and really, you know, kind of game the system, they are so few. Yeah. Compared to other people who's like, hey, you know what? This one little area just it, it looks like it needs more attention. Well, the fact that we say, no problem, Mrs. Jones, I'll be out there next Tuesday. We'll go ahead and get that area taken care of. And if there's anything else you're concerned about, please point it out to our technicians. Mm -hmm. Well, we just turned somebody who could have been like upset with our service. Into a loyal customer for life. (laughs) Yeah, loyal customer for life. And that's what we want. Uh, We turn them into a cheerleader. And they know consistently. Oh, yeah. After year, after year, we're going to provide them consistent service. And if something doesn't go right. We're going to make it right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we stand by our, our guarantee. And I, th- I think in our culture, so many people are, uh, the minute there, something doesn't go their way, something does isn't perfect, they want to yell and scream and everything. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. with our guarantee, you don't have to yell and scream. Yeah. So you, that probably helps with the reviews right yeah, there. You can call me up <laughs> and calmly say, you know what? Uh, I, I think this area could use some more attention. I'm like, cool. I understand that. We'll go ahead and definitely we'll come, come out and take care of it. I mean... And basically, it's the same thing with relationships, like with my wife. If one of us thinks there's a problem, there's a problem. Yeah, no matter what the other person does it or not. Yeah. Whether the other person sees it or not. And yeah, sometimes eh, we go out there, it's something so minor. Or I'm like, I really can't see it. But you know what? I'll clean the area anyway. Yeah. You know, just, just to make them happy. Because it's, sure. it, it's, it's not about just one-time, you know, one-time transactions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm really looking to uh, build a relationship with our customers that goes for years, decades, a long time. Yeah, definitely. And I've got customers to, that we started out with back in 2011, our very first customers. They are still calling us nice. today. And I, I, I go back even when we, before we had you know Google Calendar and our CRM program and everything else, when we were writing everything on, on paper in, in little, you know, little books to schedule our appointments because mm-hmm. we didn't have that many. You know, yeah, <laughs> uh, we can go. I can go. I still have the books, and I can go back and I can look at our very first customers. Nice, and you can send them send them a, a gift. You know, if you yeah. wanted to, you we know, can send, we can send them a gift. We can send them a card. We can uh, send them an email. Say how mm-hmm. you doing. I mean, um, we did we did something last year where we sent out a, a ton of loyalty vouchers and uh, to people who had been with us for a long a long time. Yeah, and uh, that that worked out really well. That's so, awesome. Yeah, being able to being able to see it year after year. And remember, oh, yeah, she's been with us since 2014. She's been with us since 2012. I mean, being yeah. able to see these people coming back, you know, and then telling my guys, hey, you make sure you take care of these people. For sure. Because if you don't, our competitors will. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and yeah, they would they would love to have them. How many competitors do you have here in Colorado Springs? <sighs> there's over 100 carpet cleaners here in the city. Okay. <laughs> there, there, there is. Now there's, there's a couple re- I mean, there's some really good solid companies and there's about 15, 15 carpet cleaning companies out of the hundred that I would say these are good companies mm-hmm. uh, as far as their, their top notch, their service is good. Um, and we all know each other and we help each other. For when, sure. Uh, when, if one of us is in trouble, the rest of us, even though we're competitors, we will help each other. Oh, your van's broke. You can borrow one of mine. Oh, your van's broke. You want me to go take care of that customer for you? I'll do it just so they're not. Yeah, definitely. They're not out. And we, we, we've done this. There's a very good collaborative relationship between the carpet cleaners in the city. Mm-hmm. Now there's a whole bunch of carpet cleaners that have gotten into this and they do this, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of one van operations. Mm-hmm. Uh, the owner, the owner's out doing all the work. They probably make about like a regular job salary. Then, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, you, you can, you can do okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, doing a one van operation, owner operator and stuff. And it, it's, it's whatever your comfort level is. Mm-hmm. What are, how far do you want to take your company? Yeah, for sure. Do you yeah. want to have one van and, and be happy and say, okay, yeah, I'm doing well. I can, I can pay my bills. I can feed my family. I've got beer money. I got, I can, yeah. <laughs> weekend. I can go to, I can go to a baseball game and have control of my own hours. And I, I, the, the, that's freedom for a lot of people. That, that is freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's the allure that, Hey, I don't want to, I don't mm-hmm. want to go to a corporate job and, and take off, uh, you know, take basically orders from, you know, some kid who, you know, wet behind the ears, doesn't know what he's talking about. No, I can go out and I can own and run my own business and be happy, have control of my time and, and decide how much money I want to make. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, that's the dream. And some people say, you know, what? I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Um, and they say, 
and that makes them happy and that's great. So yeah, there, there, there are a bunch of carpet cleaners that are just, you know, one van owner operated and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I like duplication. Yeah. I want to be able to, instead of having a hundred percent of my effort, I'd rather have a whole bunch, uh, just a little bit of a bunch of other people's effort going out and doing the actual work mm -hmm. that frees me up to do my marketing, marketing, Definitely. networking, um, doing, doing podcasts. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what do you think is the, the reason for your consistent, some of the main reasons for your consistent growth? Um, I think, well, number one, my drive. I'm very, yeah. I'm a very driven person. I'm very intense. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's all about time. And I'm like, I want to maximize every moment of my time. I want Definitely. to be moving forward always. I think the biggest thing that has helped us grow has been the fact that we learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to, you want to be good in business. You have to make mistakes to learn. Yeah. I mean, that is the most, it, 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 is, you, it is painful, but is uh, mistakes are your best teacher. Definitely. And make that, make those mistakes. But the biggest thing you can make mistakes in business, but if you don't learn from them and improve, mm -hmm. then you will not be good at business. For sure. You know, so the, the way I, I like to look at it is kind of like, you know, make mistakes fast. Yeah. Because the faster you make the mistakes, the faster you're going to get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of a lot of times I can get caught up in just thinking mm -hmm. and not acting, like planning out a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But really, it's just like jumping into things and getting things and making things happen and, you know, learning. And that's what you learn from the mistakes, actually, is just yeah. like, you know, taking a little leap of faith. <laughs> yeah. And the, the main thing I tell people is, is be decisive. Mm -hmm. Do not be a person who's, well... I'm planning on this. I'm thinking about it. We're doing research. We're fixing to mm -hmm. all that, yeah, all that negative language. All that is, is procrastination. Yeah. And probably coming from a place of fear, you need to be decisive because even mm -hmm. if you make the wrong decision, you're still moving forward. Yeah. All right. And I, I, I liken it to this and I've, I've heard the other people say this before. So it's not like it's my original thought, but it's easy. It's much easier to steer a moving ship. So even if you're going the wrong direction, mm -hmm. you can quickly correct. But if you're if you're standing still, trying to turn turn and make a correction is much much harder. You've got to be moving forward, be decisive, yeah. and, and take action. Um, and if people want to have massive change in their business or massive change in their life, they need to take massive action. I I hundred percent agree. So that's where I'm coming from. So uh, let's uh, talk about is is the inspiration for growing this business. And I think we kind of touched on it a little bit, mm -hmm. but is this your first business? No. Oh, it's not. No, I've had other businesses. I mean, I've been an entrepreneur since I was, well, 12. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was out selling uh, greeting cards door to door and you get a thing in the back of a, I think it was boys life magazine uh, for when I was in the boy scouts and cub scouts. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can go out for this, this company and go sell greeting cards and you know, you take the orders and then they come in and then you deliver them and then you, you get the money and then you, you know, you keep your profit. And I, I was doing yeah. that, but you know, I've had other businesses. I've, uh, I had a cellular phone uh, sales business back in the day. I, um, Oh, let's see. I owned a firearms training company oh, nice. here in town. And, uh, with my brother, he still runs it now, mm -hmm. uh, but I've, I, I've taken a step back from that company cause I want to concentrate more on, on, on what I'm building here with hydro clean. Mm -hmm. So I've turned that company over to him. But I mean, when I was doing that, I, I taught for 11 years nice. and I trained over 25,000 students. Nice. So I, I enjoy teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I've, I've had other businesses and, and they've been, and they've been good, mm -hmm. but, um, this is, you know, I'm really, really wanting to build this out. Um, as much as I can. For sure. You want to see where, where you can take it. Yeah. I, and I, and I do. And, I mean, with, with the changes we're making this year, I mean, we're, are, we're in ver vertical growth mode right now. I mean, things are happening That's good. Yeah. quickly and fast and it's an exciting ride. It's all, yeah, it's scary too. Yeah. But, yeah. Because, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're really enjoying it. Awesome. So let's get into the battle story segment of the show that okay. I'm, I know this is actually like the, I haven't announced this yet and to, to the people that are, might be listening right now, but this is uh, the first uh, interview for the Colorado Springs business podcast. And uh, I appreciate Brandon uh, taking a leap of faith on the show with me. Um, and uh, there's a segment in it that I kind of want to talk about is, is battle stories where we talk about things that happened within the company that, you know, uh, you know, I guess, how would you describe a battle story? 
you know, something that was, I guess, a struggle, yeah. you know, and I yet mean, you had to overcome. And we, we've had, we've had many. Um, yeah. Uh, one, I mean, first major battle is when we started out, we were running the business out of our home mm -hmm. and you will find very quickly that it takes a toll on your family. When you have okay. all your equipment at the house, you, you constantly bring work home. Mm -hmm. Your employees are showing up to the house. Oh, well, once we got the business out of the house, well, my marriage improved. Awesome. Uh, we made more money being away from the house and mm -hmm. not being distracted by, oh, the kids need help with the homework or, hey, that PlayStation's right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, which will really take your time up. Uh, once we got the business out of the house, we, we really started to grow a lot more. So that was big. Uh, we did have something several years back when Google had a major algorithm change. Uh, and when mm -hmm. they did that, I think it was a Penguin update. When they did that, we literally got delisted from Google and it took us four months to get back on Google. And it, it almost, it, we almost lost the business. Really? It almost cost us everything. That's where uh, most of your business comes from is Google? Uh, well, yeah, pretty much if you're, most of the searches that people are doing are mm -hmm. on Google. Oh yeah. And when, for your type of business, people, yeah. that's how people find a carpet cleaning company is they type yeah. carpet cleaning company. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, that was a struggle. And once, once we cleaned up the citations and did the things that they wanted us to do, mm -hmm. then, um, then obviously, um, that helped. We got, we got back on and listed and everything. And, um, but that, that was a struggle and we were really panicking. I mean, for we, sure. because it's not just, I'm worried about, okay, I'm going to lose my business. I'm worried about, all right, it's summer. I've got 10 employees. I've got 10 families who rely on their paycheck to mm -hmm. support their families. And if we can't do that, yeah, you know, that's a lot riding on you. I, I mean, that, that that's a lot, right? You know, a lot of lives ride on on the success of the business, not just my own, mm -hmm. you know. And I've got a lot of employees that are just like family to us. For sure. I mean, we, we've had guys that have been here for years uh, with us. And, you know, we, we've been there for their weddings. We've been there for when they've had kids. I mean, we uh, they've big, been a big part of our life. We barbecue together. We play nice. magic, you know. Uh, awesome. Or, or, <laughs> Some of the guys are, are doing D and D right now. So they just started up a new group. That's what's up. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, there's that. We, we've had some other things happen. We've, we've had people leave us. We had, uh, one employee, uh, leave us and uh, start his own company. Mm. Did it kind of sneaky. Yeah. And of course he, we, he immediately targeted our existing customers and that was, that was painful. I yeah, for I, sure. I didn't like that at all. I mean, so that, that someone who you trusted, who's been, who had been with you for a while, someone who'd been with me for a while. And, you know, I have no problem with my guys going out and, and saying, Hey boss, I really need to go build my own dream now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously I know carpet clean. That's the thing I do. So I'm going to go start a carpet cleaning company. If my guys are above board with sure. me and they say, Hey, this is what I want to do. Then I'm more than happy to, to help them. In fact, I'll even send them my overflow work. Um, yeah, for I, sure. I've got two employees right now. They actually want to buy one of my companies. Nice. And if they can find a way to make that happen, then mm -hmm. I'm willing to work and help them do that. And, so. and like you said, uh, the, there's a lot of carpet cleaning companies out here and yeah. and you guys help each other out anyway. So, I mean, we, why not? We yeah. do. And it, there is enough business here for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's kind of my thing. I, I deal from what we call a uh, an abundance mindset. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in operating as scarcity. Oh my gosh, there's only so much pie. Everyone's mm -hmm. got to fight for their piece of the pie. No, you don't. You bake a bigger pie. Yeah, I mean that's it. You know, you get out there and make it happen. So we, we've had stuff like that. Um, I think some of the other things we, we've had guys leave us uh, that leave the company because they say, oh, the grass is greener over there, mm -hmm. and then they leave. And some sometimes you know. Uh, they go, oh, I'm out of here. Bye. You know, and it's like, okay, they see the grass isn't greener over there. Okay. The grass is fake. Yeah. All right? <laughs> and then they come back and I've got a lot of guys. I've got, I've got several guys on my, on my crew that they worked for us before they've left, mm -hmm. checked out other companies and they're back with us. And the cool thing is, is they actually came back better employees. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Some people I know they, they won't allow people to come back. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I, I, if, if you have somebody, you know, like, and trust, you mm -hmm. know, the, the quality of their work and they're willing to come back and mm -hmm. they're willing to do things the way you want them done. Then I think that would be crazy 
not to take them back. I mean, unless they burned you really bad. Yeah. In which case, all right. That, that's like that just, one guy did. That, the one yeah. guy. That's yeah. so, well, at this point now, that's self-preservation. And it's like, mm, sorry, I can't let you in here. Yeah, you yeah. Know, um, you, you know, I'm trying to take the cookie off my plate. I'm like, I'll share some of my cookie, but I'm not going to eat That's just, you know. I feel you. That's the kind of way I am. But, I mean, those are some of the some of the hardships we've had over the years. But if you can learn from them and, and become a, a better, stronger um, uh, boss, mm -hmm. you can remove ego from yeah. the equation. And you look at the big picture. Okay, I want to build this business. I want to build this empire. You know, and I want to I want to provide the most value that I can. Then I, then I think you'll be successful. For sure. All right. Um, where do you see your business in a year from now? Wow. Well, we're, we're still growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I see our air duct cleaning division taking off uh, and expanding into South Denver. Okay. So basically from South Denver all the way to Pueblo, we've got a new air duct truck coming. And originally we were told, okay, it's going to take four months for them mm -hmm. to build this truck. Well, we just got the word last week. No, we're going to have that truck ready to work and it will be here by December 31st. Wow. So that's, that's put, awesome. That's going to put me three and a half months ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. And which is great because I, if I can have more crews out doing air duct cleaning, that's going to help us through the rough winter season because winter is always the hardest season for service businesses. Yeah. For, so. for pretty much almost all, all industries for real. Mm -hmm. Well, like, except for eating and cooling because. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you don't have heat, you have to have, yeah. heat and you're going to do whatever it takes to get heat back in your house. So, uh, but everyone else during the winter season, Man. So you can do air duct cleaning in the winter, but not uh, carpet cleaning for real? Yeah. See, carpet cleaning, one, once it gets below a certain degree, we're dealing with engines and we're dealing with uh, water pumps and we're dealing with all these, uh, you know, ga these big tanks full of water mm -hmm. and hoses running from the from the vehicle. In the uh, house. Yeah, yeah. And if it gets too cold and your lines start to freeze up, you can literally destroy your machine. Yeah. And we, we actually had somebody uh, do that. They, they left one of our vans out overnight in freezing temperatures. And it, it, it basically, it, it cost me $8,000 in repairs oh, damn. and three weeks of downtime waiting for parts to fix the, fix the truck. So you have to keep the trucks in, 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 in indoors. Inside. So carpet cleaning cl trucks have to be indoors at night. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it makes sense. They're going to be mm -hmm. running out, but air duct cleaning, we don't, we don't have water hoses and all that. We have air lines and they don't freeze up the same, the same way water lines do. And you can literally clean, you can clean air ducts in any weather. Nice. When, when I was training out in Michigan, learning the air duct cleaning business, mm -hmm. the night before I was, I was going out with this, with the, the crew to, uh, to train with them. We had an ice storm that night. It was February in, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was, it was so cold out there. And I asked the guys, I'm like, Hey, uh, is there any, uh, any temperature that you guys can't clean air ducts? And he goes, our boss hasn't found it. Nice. <laughs> uh, we cleaned it right after an ice storm out there and we, you know, uh, we were able to do it and the weather really wasn't a big factor, which is great. So we can, we can clean air ducts and dryer vents year round. As long as we don't have to get on the roof, we're good. Nice. So is HydroClean, is it all the way from South Denver to Pueblo right now? Um, HydroClean right now. We will go into South Denver for commercial work. Mm -hmm. we'll go, we will go to Castle Rock, Castle Pines mm -hmm. for carpet cleaning, Elizabeth, Franktown, Larkspur, uh, areas north of Monument. We, we will do that. Uh, we really don't go to Pueblo for carpet cleaning. Um, I have a friend down there. He runs a carpet cleaning business. I get you. And uh, we help each other out. He, yeah. he needs business down there. So if someone calls me, hey, can you come to Pueblo? I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't go to Pueblo because I have somebody down there who does excellent work. Yeah. And we send him all that business. For sure. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So, and he's he's got a great company down there. Well, that's what's up, man. Uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you taking the time to to do this. I think that was a really good conversation. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed it. Um, uh, I think yours, you, this episode will be released on uh, December 9th, oh. which is a Monday. I'm going to try to release them every Monday. And uh, right now I'm just trying to build up a, a catalog of, of interviews as because I could do it once every Monday or I could just do whenever I can mm -hmm. and release them on Monday because they're not live. So that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I, that's actually how I ran my other podcast was 
I would just try to re- record as many interviews as possible. They were all on the phone because I I'd be talking to to artists all the way in like London, artists and all over the world. And so I sometimes I would knock out like five interviews in one day, and then I'd have the whole week. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can tweak them, po- get them polished mm-hmm. and ready ready to go out. So you know. yeah, there's gonna be like a little intro. I might do I'm. I might do like an intro before him. And what's cool is there's going to be ad space on him too. And like, I'm going to, I'm going to like, once I start getting a viewership, there's going to be an ad space at the beginning of it and ad space at the end of it. Smart. And you know, so that it has profits coming in. Yeah. <laughs> and what's cool is like, um, also the people who are on the podcast, it's kind of like a little bit of exposure for them. Sure. Cause I, I could see this uh, becoming a, a legit thing in Colorado Springs, mm-hmm. like a, a top podcast for, specifically for Colorado Springs. And that's, I think that's the, the cool thing about this one is that it's, it's niched down. I could have just started a, a business podcast, but I think it's, it's interesting because anyone in Colorado Springs looking for Colorado Springs specific podcast, mm-hmm. this will pop up right there at the, at the top. Well, I can give you a list of people mm-hmm. that would be great to interview for your podcast. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So I can definitely do that. Um, first one is going to be little red wagon movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely want to get Vin, Vin, Vince Vin, and Tanya Vincent, on. Vince and Tanya, they are some yeah. good people. I mean, and I, I, last like a couple of weeks ago at a Million Cups, me and Vince talked literally for an fifty-five minutes straight. Yeah, like nonstop. Like so, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, Vince and I've known Vince for over twenty something years. Yeah, uh, he used to own Hydro Clean. Yeah, and before he owned it, his brother owned it. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, and so Vince owned Extreme Clean. Mm-hmm. His brother owned Hydro Clean. His brother got tired of doing carbon clean. So he sold that to Vince and then Vince sold it to me. And then I, I, I ran with it. Yeah. Vince had no idea. Vince goes, Oh yeah, yeah. He'll, 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 he'll do some carpet here and there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he had no idea. I, cause I, I quickly surpassed mm-hmm. what his company. Where do you think that drive comes from? Um, my drive comes from, uh, mainly, I don't want to go back where I've been before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been homeless. I've been bankrupt. I've been unemployed. I've been on food stamps. And that was a very dark place. I don't ever want to go back there again. For sure. So my drive is number one, never, ever go back there. Yeah. (laughs) And number two, to build a legacy Mm -hmm. so that my kids will have it easier than I did. Yeah. And hopefully their kids and their kids and, and onward. I mean... Because, I mean, carpet cleaning is not the end game for me. Okay. I mean, I'm going to be using the, the profits from uh, moving forward from from here. Uh, besides build it, using the money to build the business, I'm also going to be investing in real estate. Okay. And if I can if I can get myself uh, eight to ten rental properties that are income, oh, yeah. income producing, I'm done. You could even, since everything's moving east, you could even build them. I, you know, yeah. Build them, <laughs> I can find some good condo units. Yeah. I really don't want to do single family. Okay. Too much pain. Oh my gosh. You're worrying about the roof. You're worrying about the yard, the fence, all the stuff that the HOA will worry about if you're in in a community and I'll let, I'll let them deal with it. Yeah. (laughs) So, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm going. If I can get them in income producing, get eight to 10 of them, I'm done. I'm retired. I will will travel and teach. Yeah. I was about to say, I know you said you liked uh, teaching and and educating. So I could, I could definitely see you building building a life around that. Yeah. And I think I would enjoy that. Hell yeah. So, well, hmm. all right, man, that's, I guess that wraps up the podcast. Um, we'll see you guys next week. All right. That was all for this episode of the Colorado Springs business podcast. Stay tuned each week. Every Monday we'll be, we will be releasing a new episode with a new entrepreneur and business owner slash leader in Colorado Springs. And one more thing, if I could get you guys to subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it, whether it be Stitcher, iTunes, Apple, YouTube, wherever. Eventually, we will, we will be having video on this podcast too. But right now, this is just for the audio peeps. So let's get it going and I will see you guys next week.